between the episodes on Eisenholm. The hunt for more copper continued while waiting for our leather to finish. Should I have taken prospecting pick readings while I was out? Yes. Did I remember to? <laughs> no. Returning home, I fired up a few splitter plug molds to eventually take advantage of the quarry mod. I then made a few flint axes and got back to Lumberjacksville once again on the oak trees until the leather was finally ready. I fashioned three leather backpacks, but we'll have to wait for the second batch to finish before making a fourth. With the splitter plug molds finishing soon after, I used some of our newly acquired copper to smelt a bunch of tin bronze splitter plugs. They'll come in handy when we're ready to start collecting massive amounts of conglomerate rock for our eventual castle. With the need for storage on the brain, I gathered some more of the blue clay outside the dirt dugout and got to forming three more storage vessels. Come spring, we'll need much more food storage since I don't anticipate us eating through what we currently have before then. Once those were cooking, I cleared out the last of the spelt stragglers from the farmland so it could start replenishing nutrients over the rest of the winter. Then, it was off to explore in search of slate. Heading east, I came across some ruins, and more than one cave lured me in with promises of potential aged torch holders. I may have lost sight of my original goal, nearly filling my inventory along with the chest on my back. I had to leave an aged wooden chest behind with some lore books inside, but I marked it on the map to return later on. By the time I came across some slate, <laughs> my inventory was nearly full. I gathered what I could and dubbed this outing a successful scouting mission before making the long journey home by sea to clear out my inventory and put up the painting we had found in a ruin. And that brings us to today, where we've got that little bit of iron that we picked up on our little expedition cooking away in a bloomery and soon, very soon, we will have ourselves our very first iron bloom. Then we can hammer it down on our anvil to get our very first iron ingot. And that is about all we need, I hope, I think, to make a pantograph. Now with one of these, we can copy the shape of a chiseled block onto any other block, chiseled or otherwise. So the fact that we chiseled all of those limestone rocks for the wall will not actually matter. We're gonna be able to get those walls done once our iron is ready. But we do have a little bit of time before that's done cooking, so we'll give that a few minutes. And while we're waiting, let's take these Molybdo Chancos ingots that we found on our little trip, and we're just going to hammer these guys down into a plate. Find the bony, bony soil. Now that we have a pantograph in hand, we can get that little recessed aspect of that one singular wall copied over to every other wall on the top floor. And by the power of movie magic teleportation, we are suddenly on the balcony. Let's give a little demonstration of how this works, and then I'm just gonna run around and copy this onto every single wall up here. So if we look at a chisel block and we press F, we're gonna have all these options here. Now, some of these we're not going to need to worry about, like doors, we're probably gonna touch on those at some point, but uh, I don't think we're doing any custom doors until we get to some of the fancier builds. This is a new feature, copy protected blocks so other people can't copy it. Good for servers, useless for us here. But what we're looking at is replace shape mode. So if we left click on a chisel block here, that'll take a little snapshot of it. And now if we just right click, that pastes that shape right there onto another block. And see how much quicker that is. Now there is a good chance that that could cause some lighting issues. So if I take that off, we're actually not seeing any, probably because we're not taking off too much of the block itself. But there is a chance to create lighting issues, which then you just take a chisel, remove a voxel, add a voxel, and you're all good. So I'm just gonna run around and copy that to all the exterior walls, rotating them as necessary, and I'll see you in just a moment. And with that, all of the upper walls have that little bit of a recessed aspect just to give a bit more three dimension to the wood. 
Now I did leave this particular back wall here untouched just for the moment because we are going to be building a big old chimney coming out the back of here, but I haven't quite settled on a design for it. So I don't know which of these is going to have to be shaved down and which of them might just be getting replaced entirely. So we'll play that one by ear. So now that we've gotten a small taste of iron, I kind of want more, in all honesty. Only problem is I got that from a ruin, and I forgot to take readings of the rock and the ore deposits. That's okay, though, because we need a lot of slate. So, I think, before it gets to be too, too far into the dead of winter and gets unbearably cold, it's negative eight right now, so it's already not good, but it's only gonna get worse as the winter goes on. So I think if we make that trip out now, collect as much slate as we possibly can, with as empty of an inventory as possible, and I don't fill it up with everything I can find this time, we can build up enough of a supply of slate that hopefully we can maybe finish the roof without having to make another trip. So let's clear out the rest of this, which I believe a good bit of that should probably go to the dugout. However, I don't want to make more chests right now, so I'm just going to dump a lot of this extra stuff. I uh, don't think we'll need the... I'll bring the low-fertility soil, but we'll get rid of it if we don't need it. Extra pickaxes. I did pick up a Jonas part, which is kind of cool. I don't know when I'm going to be making any sort of Jonas assembly bits, because there's so many parts. So let's take a little bit of an inventory before we head out. We've got our prospecting pick. We're going to need that so we can get some readings when we're out, if I remember to. Uh, a few pickaxes, because I don't know how much uh, slate we're going to find out there. Sticks, I guess we can use as fuel if we need to make a fire for a little bit to warm up, because it is a little chilly. This shovel I found in a ruin on the first trip, it'll be useful, because there's a lot of gravel on top of the rocks we want. So we have a long ways to go. We're way down here. Now we have to go all the way up, up, and we could probably just cut over here. We have to go right to these mountains right here. A little bit of a trek, could go around, probably might just to save on hunger, but we'll see. Maybe we'll cut across, but these are pretty hilly mountainous areas and they're a little tricky to traverse. So my frosty self will see you after a very exceedingly long and icy ocean voyage. Now, one other thing I'm hunting for while we're out. I didn't notice anything on the first trip, but there's a lot of forest here, and there's a part of me that wants to believe it can't possibly all just be oak and maple and nothing else. There's plenty of other tree types that grow in this region of the world. Hoping that we can come across maybe... Uh, Larch, bald cypress, walnut would be great too. If I'm remembering correctly, I think larch and bald cypress are usually up on mountains. I'm seeing a lot of pine, so these mountains might not be high enough. Those way off in the distance, they look like pine. They might be something different, but I'm not entirely certain. It's not a main goal for this particular outing but it definitely will become a priority as we continue to build, and well, I want a little bit more color palettes for the wood. One day, we will also make a trip down south to get ourselves a little bit of ebony and purple heartwood. Uh, the crops themselves from down south, I'm not entirely certain we're going to need to care about, because a lot of them won't really grow up here too easily, apart from maybe one rotation in the summer. Could be an excuse to build a greenhouse, though. Hello, big old oak. I thought this was a giant oak tree, but it turns out, nope, we got ourselves a little bit of walnut here. And we already got a walnut seed from the very first bit of bush that we broke. Okay, let's collect. I mean, even just one is going to be enough for us to get a good bit. I'm going to mark this here so we can come back a little later on. Perfect. One more tree type to add to our collection. We can grow a few of those back home. Uh, of course, they probably won't sprout until the spring, so we might want to just cut that guy down for a little bit of wood right now. And by right now, I mean after 
we go collect as much slate as we can humanly carry. Come back for you, my books. There'll be pretend cookbooks in the kitchen before you know it. Of course, I get here just as darkness is falling. Where? Why did I not mark it down? I did. I'm just blind. Is there anything more abundant and less gravel covered over here? Hello, sheep. What's your weight? Low. Welcome to winter. Let's get rid of a lot of this gravel here. I'm hoping, because that first uh, bit of slate that I found was a single layer of rock, I'm hoping we find one that's more than just one layer. Hmm. Seems like it's just a thin sheet on top of Paradwite, which is going to make our job a little bit trickier here. I'm gonna keep looking around the area, because if that's the rock strata pattern, there's hopefully going to be something where we've got a layer that's thicker than just one, one rock deep. Get back over to where the slate was. So my exploratory endeavors to try and find better slate deposits has not gone well, and now I'm freezing. Where were my original markers? One might say this has gone the opposite of swimmingly. I'm just gonna hole up right here. So while we're warming ourselves by the fire here, let's take a little look at the maps. We've got two different spots that have slate. Didn't see any in the surrounding areas. So the sun should hopefully be up soon, and then we'll be able to see from these vantage points if there's any around, because hunting around in the dark has not proven very productive. Out in the dark of the wilderness, surrounded only by a campfire to guide the way. We sit and ponder. So we freeze our toes off. Negative 17 outside. It feels like Canada. We'll leave our little fire pit here as a reminder of warmer times. The sun is coming up, but it's not super useful. And now, on this December 1st evening, we have finally collected, I hope, enough slate to make the roof. I didn't do the math. So we might be short. We're not short. We're two voxels shy of two meters tall. Aha. Uh -huh. So how about we use a lot of these materials we've gathered to start getting a little bit of building going on? I have filled up a good chunk of crate here. We've got ourselves uh, just shy of 1,900 stones. 
So hopefully this will be enough slate. We do have a lot of gravel, 272, as well as 24 slate rocks. That is for a secret project. <laughs> so we're going to need a lot of roof pieces. Let's get to crafting some of these. Now the unfortunate thing is that this takes so very much so, so very much stone. But at least we can get ourselves two stacks per stack of clay. So clay is... if It's efficient for clay. So we have ourselves nearly three stacks of slanted slate roof. I don't know if that's going to be enough. But I suppose we're going to find out in just a moment here. To the roof! And the trap door at the top there actually still keeps this area down here sealed. So that's perfect. We have a lot of snow buildup on the roof. At least we have our general shape still. So apart from the corner pieces, which we're not going to worry about for the moment, we're just going to get a trim around the edge. And we'll add one on either end here as a little bit of an overhang. There we go. And it's a little tough to see because we're in the dead of night and the dead of winter, but we've got the framing of where the roof is going to be kind of laid out. So we've got our long roof going here. We'll probably add a dormer window here, maybe one out the back. I'm not too concerned about being able to see out from the inside here, just what aesthetically is gonna look good on the outside. Here we change up the roof a little bit and have it go this way. Now the tricky thing is because this is going to be slightly more narrow than over here where we've got out one more block. So the roof is going to change a little bit right in the middle somewhere here, probably. That will be interesting, and I'm thinking I can blend it in at the T-junction for the, the roof here, but we shall see. In the meantime, I'm going to grab a few more rocks, and I'm going to uh, put our corners in. So I'll be right back. Now, I normally would do this in the form of a time lapse, but with the amount of days that have elapsed, you can see in the corner here, we have a storm on the horizon. But also this, uh, this, this might not be the most beautiful attic. We will see, but it's going to be dingy. We're going to have use for some of those cobwebs we picked up. I'm going to make it look very abandoned in the attic. It'll just be a forgotten little out of the way storage. Hopefully not forgotten. I already misplaced my copper. I've done it twice. I just put in places and I forget. I'm just going to keep putting tiles in until we were not allowed to do it anymore. I'm also shivering something fierce because it's uh, it mighty cold out. <laughs> Ooh. I should probably get inside before I get too hypothermic. Warm ourselves up by a nice cozy fire. Ah, perfectly safe, toasting our buns on the stovetop. You see, heated seats are not a modern invention of current day vehicles. We could do it all back then. So I'm going to try and place as many more little roof tiles as I can before the temporal storm hits. And I will see you all after we have slept through it because it's a heavy storm. I will not survive. We haven't built a boiler room or whatever the new version of it is that's going to account for all the, the new drifters being able to spawn on rocks and all that. So I'll see you on the other side of this storm where I'm going to sleep down here amongst my crates. And we awake in our little shelter safe and sound. And I believe if time is flowing at a rate that I believe it is, yes, our second batch of leather is all ready to go. We're going to be able to get rid of uh, this little hand basket. Doop. 
Adieu. Oh, it's it's beautiful. So much more room for activities and things. We'll find a nice use for these hand baskets, I'd imagine. They're they're nice. They're very charming. So I'm sure we can find a nice little spot to put them for just decoration, since mechanically they're not super useful to us anymore. Oh, oh I set down one of these on the counter. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that'll probably get moved. But at least we've got it. Uh, I can't remember if I walked over here at some point, but during the montage, or something between the episodes, I built a sieve. Now, it's useful for pulp, I believe. So these guys here are ingredients for parchment. So by parchment, you gotta make linen fiber pulp, and uh, you run that through a sieve, and then you've got yourself some parchment. I don't know if we're gonna do that, but it's fitting to have that right below where our books are gonna go. And it just kind of looks like a nice sifter for flour and things like that, which sure would make a bit more sense over there, but it adds a little bit more wood and just decoration really for the corner. Do I have any more of those limestone rocks that I was using? Where are those chiseled limestones? A little bit of conglomerate. Where did I put my limestone? There you are. My pantograph. Now, let's get ourselves a bit of framing up in here. I didn't bring my chisel up. Come here, you. Now this is the difficult one because it is more open than the rest. Now here's the dilemma. This end here, odd amount. This wall here, also odd amount. This one here, even amount. Me no like. So this is going to be a little different and I think we're probably gonna have a window in place. So let's see, at the very least, we will have a two block window there, very likely. We could custom chisel a little circular window here, which we might end up doing at some point. I might just put two window panes in there and then some framing around it. I'm not entirely sure. I do feel like having the corner here be separated from the window a little bit might look better. So we might have just one of those creepy little windows that you see in old haunted house attics. Maybe we'll put a straw dummy there. So if we look from outside, we'll have just a weird little face staring at us out the window. Yeah. Like the creepy little ghost girl thing. That's not descriptive. There's like hundreds of those in media. With the size of this attic, it's not exactly sealed. Now I don't know if all of the uh, roof blocks here now count as uh, you know, something to seal in for temperature. Nice thing is, it doesn't matter if we got snow coming in here. If it's drafty in the attic, that's okay. This isn't the real world where you're going to want an adequate amount of insulation here to keep the heat from coming out from down below, because once we come down here, everything's fine. It's a sealed house. We're good. The attic being drafty, Kinda just makes sense. Have a little bit more wood. That's what we've got it for. Making pillars and things with the wood. Oak wood. Versatile oak wood. Yeah, we will, even if we don't care about it being drafty, I will still divide this up a little bit, just so that way we've got a bit more interest up here. 
that is, yeah, you know what? There we go, we have a little alcove here. It's kind of mirrored, actually. That's good. That's very good. So I think for these walls in here, any sort of little dividers, we can just use a little bit of limestone that is not really chiseled in. They may be chiseled blocks, but we'll just use them as dividers. We might separate the rooms a bit. This could be a nice little separated area. And if we do that, it would maybe seal in some of it. This, I feel, will not. No matter what, this is going to be drafty in here. But that's not the worst. Let's do a little test. If we were to wall this off, this is actually sealed. Interesting. Okay. Oh, actually seals this as well. Okay, maybe uh, maybe we'll just put a set of double doors in there or something. These dividing walls I may actually replace. There we are. And these, I could grab my pickaxe, but I won't. These, I'm going to make as vertical planks. Yeah. Do the same on this side as well. Part of me is tempted to chisel in the inner half of the limestone blocks here to also be wood, just to give a bit more, I mean, wood look in here. See how that looks, actually. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing that. That just makes it a lot cozier. Compared to something like this. Yeah. For the attic, I think it fits super well. Of course, once we get the floor in. Which, I haven't decided what type of wood or what type of ceiling we're going to have down below. But I'm going to go ahead and replace the inner half of all these limestone blocks with more oak planks. And there we have it. We've replaced all of the interior limestone up in the attic with oak planks. I think that just looks more attic-y. For some reason, just wood planks. Vertical planks specifically just evoke this attic feeling for me. I don't know if I will add a layer of anything to cover up the shingles. It might make it feel a bit too cramped. We're already a little lacking on space in here. Not that we're going to need a whole lot of space for a little farmhouse, but... I don't want to make it any smaller than it has to be. Also, was thinking of running oak logs along the edge as sort of a top support. It's just going to get a little weird on this stretch where it won't be centered anymore after a certain point, and I don't think filling it in with two layers from here out is going to make a whole lot of sense. Let's see. Okay, okay. So I, I do like it along in here. In here, it feels... A little low? It's really low. Although I suppose it's an attic, it's just kind of storage space. I'm not a huge fan of this. It's way too low for my personal preference, but... Oh, I just figured out how I'm going to do it. Okay. Done. Done. This part does not need wood. There we go. There we go. Everything is good. And we can just add more planks here to create another room divide. Awesome. All right. Beautiful. More walls. 
It's nice. I like this. I like this. We're getting cozy. We're dividing it up in a way that feels uh, semi-natural, to me at least. And now we have ourselves one, two, uh, three, four distinct areas within our attic. This short area here, I don't know what I'll do with it. It's honestly probably just going to get filled with crates and cobwebs and things like that. Because we can bump our head on this. Well, we just barely skirt under, so. Eventually, a lot of those crates down below are probably going to get brought up here. But we'll wait until we have the floor and everything in place for that. And these doors can just stay open all the time. They're mainly here just to seal it off. Oh, and this is a nice cellar, apparently. Cool. Oh, are these all cellars now? Th th this is a house. So these two sections actually count as cellars. So we could store things up here as well that are food. Well, that's interesting. Okay. I might play around with some ideas here. This might not be the worst idea I've ever had. But for now, we're going to leave that place. I have... One more tiny outing before we can get another little segment of the house completed today. For you see, in this little entryway, I shall need rock types three. I have two of the three stone types that I'm going to want for my little idea at the front entrance here. So I just need to go grab the third. I'm about to head back out into the cold. Before I do that, I do actually want to make something else with this leather. Nothing super beneficial. Just cool looking. Got myself some leather bracers. And when we put the clockmaker's wrist guard back on, when we don't need the extra warmth for winter, it will actually cover up one of them, I believe the left arm. Give us a nice little bit of asymmetry. We'll just... Pop this bronze bracelet in a random trunk for the moment. We won't need it where we're going. I'm gonna need a pickaxe. Where did I put my pickaxe? Did I put it at the dirt dugout? Probably. Let me guess. It was in the chest right in front of the kitchen, and I was two feet from it the entire time. Very likely. The whole time. They were by the front door. The whole time. See what I mean about, uh... I lose everything. I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached to my body. We're gonna go out and grab ourselves just a... Just a touch of sandstone. It'll be a long way to go for how little we're going to need, so I'll probably just grab more than what I want. Just to have some extra. Oh no, why are my arms... Why am I standing? I, I I guess I uh I guess I will stand for this. Okay, getting off and back on again fixed it. But there is a deer somewhere over there. And it's got full antlers. So we're getting very close to that time where we can grab ourselves either some moose antlers or deer antlers. I guess if that deer is close by. We can probably, uh, let them grow out to their maximum stage, and either we, uh, harvest them in the spring, or I think there might be some natural shedding. This is a new mechanic, so we're gonna see how this plays out. And we've reached... Sure... What's that light back there? Oh, it's a trader. I don't know why I was so confused of, like, why is there a lit structure over here? This is uh, far less suspicious than I anticipated. Hello? Who are you? A building materials trader. Hello, Humbert. Do not stab a man. Okay. I'll keep you in mind. Though I do have a closer building materials trader. Over yonder by spawn right there. Oh, this place is not temporally stable. I'm just going to mark you real quick. Can I get away from your cart? Because, sir, you should be going a little uh, a little nutso here, I think. Oh, I hope this whole area isn't... Okay, good. We're, we're better here. <gasps> An ore vessel. Ooh. 
We got wolves. Swim to safety. Sail away from the wolves. It's okay. They will bite. They are mean. They don't play. And we've got ourselves... Ooh, hoo, hoo. Oh, there is so much sandstone here. Just under the surface. I can hear drifty boys. So that... I was going to say, so there's a cave nearby. A little more nearby than I would have liked. We're just going to close ourselves in here. <laughs> we don't want any business with you, good sirs. Not on this fine night. Ouch. Oh, ah. Oh. Ooh, tunnel's been compromised. The structural integrity has been fouled. Come on, what are you going to do? Run from me? Where are you going to run? The water's going to push you right back in? Come on. Come around the corner. You're not long for this world, boy. We're just going to ignore the mournful wails of the drifters and... Well, we're, we're just, we're, we're going to do us, okay? We're, we're going to do as we do. Take our lunch break. 3 a.m. lunch break. 16. I'm good with this. You know, this is actually, uh, it's not as much as I had hoped. But it's more than I expected. I'm sorry, is this... This is a set of ruins? This is an interesting structure. These are indeed ruins. That is not my hole. That is a... Uh, you know what? We're going to risk it. Aha. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Yep. Yep. This is worth it. Good. We have found ourselves a nice little underground shack here. Whoops. All right, we got a little pottery crate. Let's see if we get that. We do. Aha, beautiful. You know what? I actually want these cobwebs this time because they might do well for our attic. What do we have in here? Another Jonas part. Okay, some tin, coal, lead. We're going to need that for windows. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're just, just going to take everything from here. You know what? We have not much durability left on this flint axe. We're actually going to take some of the boards. I should... Oh, you... You boys, you're cheeky, aren't you? Oh, I, I see how this is. I see how this is. No more ancient wood for us, huh? Because you're making these all chiseled. How are we supposed to build in these conditions, good sirs? Gentlemen, this is democracy manifest. I am going to take this pottery then. I don't know if I need these cook pots. I'm gonna take this forge as well. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna take it. I'm taking everything. What have we got in there? Crucible? Nah, nah, nah. We got my crucible now. What do you guys got down below there, huh? Huh? What's going on down there? You, you partying? Yeah, that's right. You hit each other. Anything else interesting down there? Oh. All right, well, that's it. I'm going to I'm going to take my uh my happy little self home then. I'm going to take this resin here. Mark this tree. You know what? I might actually take this opportunity to check some of these other pine trees. Just gather maybe a couple pieces of resin if there's any more. 
But this is a massive pine forest. There's bound to be tons of resin here. What I'll likely do at some point, probably the next time I come around gathering resin, is any of the trees that I find that do have resin, I'll cut them off from one log above. Honestly, chop down the rest. Just clear it out so only trees with resin are remaining. Make it a little easier to see the resin through the trees. Well, there's a lot of trees here to look through. I found six resin. Oh, there's number seven. So I think I'm going to come back here at some point with a mm, whole set of axes and probably some ladders just to get to the higher bits of resin a little bit easier. Oh. <gasps> Seed vessel. What kind of seeds? Soybean seeds. You are, uh, not what I want. I would like a cabbage. I see. I picked the exact spot where the wolves live. Let's just get ourselves in the water. Get right on out of here. Bye, dogs. Cutting through there might be a quicker way home instead of sailing all the way around. I'm going to try cutting through the forest there, and I will see you all back at the house. And here we are, safe and sound back at home. So let's prepare the materials we gathered and get to a little bit of home decor. So what's the plan that we have here for this front entrance? But first, let's get this table out of the way. Sit there for the time being. So here, we're going to have a mix of three different colors. Ahia, ahia, and ahia. So slate, chert, and sandstone. We're gonna mix these together into some multi-chisel blocks, fill in this space here, and make it just a little bit decorative. And now that we have one of them that has been built into a multi-chisel block, we can actually take them out to our workbench and do what it was intended to do. So we just need to pop these here in order and we can have it just put these all together for us. I think this is gonna eat our chisel. It ate our chisel. New chisel, you're up. This may not be the most durability efficient way to do it, but I haven't done the math, so I don't know. And now let's just clear out the floor space here. Pop these back up there. And then I realize I want to cut halfway into the wood here. So you're all going to have to move, arrows. I'm screaming in hunger. That's not good. Oh, my arm is stuck in the chiseling position. Am I out of food? Am I out of crocs of food? I keep hearing drifters. And I realize I did not light up <laughs> the attic. Whoopsies. We're not going in there for a while then. We're just going to keep screaming out of hunger. <gasps> Except for the food. Being ready. Oh. So, now that we're back to this, let's get our wood back out. So we're just going to have a small trim of wood. And there we go. So we've got our wood trim here just to separate our entryway from the rest of the first floor here. So I have been trying out different designs for the floor, and I've got a few different ideas. We probably won't be touching on it this episode, but I'll probably end up doing the floor and the ceiling here, which consequently will then become the floor on the second floor here. I'll probably do that next episode. Yeah. But for now, let's get this entryway prettied up. We might even do a couple other little projects around the house here. So let's get into a little bit of a time lapse.
And here we are. We've got ourselves a nice little dining table here with a couple of benches. And we've got our little entryway here. Now, what I am going to do with this area is once we've got a little bit more iron, I'm going to make a hand planer and use that to give a little bit more depth to the floor here. So sink down a few of the bricks here and there, probably more in the middle. That'll give us a nice raised outline here. This will be kind of flush with the floor and then the inner bricks there. I'm just going to start sinking down into the floor a little bit, probably by one voxel, maybe two in the center. And I think that'll give us a nice little bit of interest to that area. Of course, on the left side there where the chests are and the arrows currently, that will just remain flat because we're going to have things covering that. That's where our tools and various accessories that we might need as we go out are going to sit. But I think that's about all we're going to have time for today. We've gotten a good bit of work on the house done. We've got our roof in place, the attic kind of put together at least a little bit. And we've got a little bit more decoration on the ground floor. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like if you want to. Who knows? And I'd like to give a special shout out to our channel members. There's more of you every single time. But as always, I'll see you next time. Bye. Dangle my feet, dangle my feet, my feet like to dangle cause the dangly feet.